Hello and welcome to week number 29 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. Today we are making the easiest loaf of bread you'll ever bake. That is actually the name of the recipe. Look, last week we had some cupcakes that, while not complicated, were definitely labor and time intensive. So we're going easy this week. Not only is it a very simple recipe, it's gonna end up being a very pretty recipe and you get two loaves of bread. So you get to keep one for yourself and maybe give one to someone else to brighten up their day. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. When I said easy, I meant easy. You need your mixer. You can do this by hand, but this is gonna be a lot easier. We're gonna start with a paddle attachment, but you will need a dough hook. In your bowl, four and a half cups of bread flour. I am using bread flour. I'm not substituting all purpose, so bread flour, kind of an important deal here. Next, you are going to add a tablespoon of granulated sugar, two and one fourth teaspoons of instant yeast, two and a half teaspoons of table salt, and you're just throwing that all in together. And then you need one and two thirds cup of lukewarm water. Now it needs to be between 90 and 100 degrees. That is so that you activate the yeast, but you don't kill it. And you're just gonna stir that. I mean, you will if your machine is plugged in. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the kind of day it's going to be today. That's okay. All right. And we're just going to stir that up. Everything is going to come together in a shaggy mess of a dough. If you are doing this by hand, you're going to mix it up in the bowl. And then once you get to that shaggy part, you're going to go ahead and turn it out onto a counter and start kneading it with your hands. Um, you might need to use an extra half a cup of flour. My mixer is not loving this. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour and then I think I'm gonna to switch to kneading it by hand. So let me get this out of the way and we'll pick it back up. Okay, by adding a little bit more flour and kneading it inside the bowl, I was able to get it into a ball of dough. I have added my dough hook and now we are going to let that go for about seven minutes. Uh, the dough should be elastic and smooth by the time it's done and feel a little bit bouncy. Um, yeah, so we'll check back in in about seven minutes. My KitchenAid just died. <laughs> not good. Um, it's not even a strong dough but it has, that's not healthy. Okay, uh, woo, that, all right. I am finishing kneading it on the counter. <laughs> I am really upset about the mixer. Um, I am just absolutely, I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about the KitchenAid mixer, <laughs> except that I'm not happy right now and I'm gonna have to navigate customer service because there's no way that this loaf of bread should have done that to my mixer. Okay, it springs back. Now, lightly grease a bowl, plop your bread in, we're gonna cover it and let it sit for an hour to two hours. It should uh, double in size. So, all right, good luck and I'll see you back in an hour. It's been about an hour and a half. My dough has definitely risen. It's pretty much doubled in size. I knew I was gonna have a little bit of trouble with mine because the kneading process was interrupted due to the mixer breaking down. So that's okay. Um, it's done surprisingly well. Ooh. <laughs> All right, here is what we are going to do. You're going to take your loaf of bread. You're going to divide it into half. 
because we are getting two loaves out of this, okay? Two loaves of bread. Um, gently deflate it. And then it needs to be like a six by eight oval. You can kind of, you don't need to roll it. You can kind of pull it and shape it. Um, kind of like an, a letter. And then, see mine's pretty elastic. See, I'm just kind of stretching it into that rectangle shape. Oval, whatever. All right, working with one piece of dough at a time, you're gonna grab the short side and you're gonna fold it in on itself like that. And then again like that. And then you're gonna use the heel of your hand to press that closed. And then we're gonna run, roll this up until it's about a 10 inch long loaf here. This might be a little too long. It's a little funky shaped. Seam side down on your parchment paper. Let's see if I can get this one to look maybe a little bit better. Well, I feel like my seam kind of came undone there. Where's my seam? There's my seam. Seam side down. That was pretty easy, huh? Well, that's weird. You're supposed to sprinkle your cornmeal on the uh, parchment, although they didn't say that until you put the things down. So let me go get my cornmeal and we'll take care of that. Sprinkle it on here. It's supposed to kind of give the, your bread a little bit of like a crunchy, crunchy base to it. So it doesn't say how much, but <laughs> there we go. All right, that's done. All right, the next step is to lightly cover your bread with plastic wrap that has been lightly greased. And I did mine the wrong way. <laughs> I tell you what, the whole mixer uh, debacle has really, really thrown my brain. So and that's okay, we have a plan in place. And there we go, it says lightly cover. Now we're gonna leave that for 45 minutes to let that bread rise, <laughs> ignore the timer, that's for something else. So 45 minutes, you can let it sit out on the counter. Um, when it, it's gonna get puffy, it's not gonna double in size, it's gonna get puffy. You stick your finger in it and uh, if the indentation stays, then it's ready to bake. So set a timer, 45 minutes, and I'll see you back. Your dough should be nice and puffy. Your finger indentation should stay. Now comes the fun part. You're gonna wanna preheat your oven to 450 degrees. Technically, you probably should have done that about halfway through your last proof time, but I forgot to mention it, and I'm sorry. The next thing you're gonna need is some flour, and a knife. If you wanna get real fancy, a bread lame, which is just a razor blade on a handle. Use a knife, it's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be scoring our loaves of bread, making them look nice and pretty. Let's get into how to do that. So I did read something that you'll wanna dust the top with rice flour um, for an extra contrasty look. I'm gonna do one in rice flour and one in regular flour so that we can see the difference. So this will be my rice flour loaf right here and you're just gonna sprinkle it on top and kinda rub it in. Try to get it all over. Make it nice and floury. Now that rice flour is a little more coarse than plain all-purpose flour, which is what I'm gonna use on this one right here. 
Um, the all-purpose does tend to stick a little bit better. So I'm making sure I'm getting my ends. Now, you can get as fancy as you want or keep it simple by just doing a line across the top like this. So you're going to make it about a half an inch deep. I'm going to do three on this one. That knife is going in there about a half an inch. It might be a little deeper. It's, it's hard for me to judge. Just three diagonal lines. Kind of pulling mine separate a little bit. Or you could do something a little fancier, like a braided look on this loaf. See, so you can get fancy. You don't have to get fancy. The bread is going to taste good no matter what it looks like. So there we go. Now the recipe does mention using water to steam it to get a crustier exterior. But if you're new to bread making, don't worry about it. This is going to be fantastic. So once you're done with that, uh, let's see here. The bread is going to go into your 450 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes until the crust is a golden brown and the loaf sounds hollow when you tap on it. Okay. If you want to use a thermometer, the inside of the bread should register at least 190 degrees. You're going to turn the oven off and you're going to crack the door open and allow the bread to be inside for five additional minutes. So that's going to help keep your crust nice and strong on there. Okay. Don't cut your bread open while it's hot. You're going to wait until it is completely cool. All right. And then we're going to cut it open and try it. And I will see you then. This is the one that I dusted with the rice flour. And this is the one that I dusted with the regular flour. Honestly, I really prefer the regular flour. This, this rice flour is just kind of gathering and then it's coming right off. So, um, I think regular flour is definitely, definitely the way to go. All right. Let's, I don't know if you can hear that. It sounds hollow. It reached temperature. I did check and mine is very crusty. Let's see what we got. Absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm going right in here. No butter or anything. That's good white bread. Well, it's definitely a winner despite the mixer issues that I had earlier. I'll be making this again. It was easy enough to knead the dough by hand, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, yeah, winning recipe from King Arthur and I get to give a loaf to a friend now. So super duper excited. Well, that is it for week number 29. I hope that you were able to bake along and I hope that your bread turned out fantastic. If you haven't already, you should hit the subscribe button below because I'm going to bring you a new to me recipe every single Saturday. You should also head over to Facebook or Instagram because every Wednesday morning, okay, sometimes Thursdays, I'm going to give you the ingredient list and the name of what we're making. That way you can decide if you want to bake along that weekend and you have plenty of time to get your shopping done. So, Tune in and I will see you next week.